Justine Bateman broke out in Hollywood, playing Mallory, of course, in Family Ties. Today, she is making her mark as a best-selling author and director with her new film, Violet, that she also wrote. Wow. Justine, oh, welcome cool. to the oh, wow. Yeah, baby. Hot guys. Justine, I mean, first of all, you wear many hats. We're going to get to Violet. Very exciting. But as you can tell, we're all dressed up. <laughs> it is Halloween. You won't be wearing that hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what about you? How are you going to be, you and your family, celebrate Halloween? Do you guys get into the holiday? I think I'm going to be dressed head to toe in purple and have this yes! across my, face <laughs> my new film. Violet. Good advertising. Very good advertising. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Violet. You wrote, you directed this movie about a woman battling the negative voices in her head. I cannot mm. tell you how much I relate to this. Please take a look. You're fat. Your hair is gross. You smell. You majored in the wrong thing in college. You don't have enough Why friends. Don't you, know how to cook? you don't remember enough people's birthdays. Everyone can see your wish be falling along in your career. Wow. Okay, why was this a story you wanted to tell? And I'm just going to tell you right now, so many people are going to relate to this so well. Everybody. Everybody. Men, women, everything. That's great. I mean, that's why I made it. You know, years ago I made a lot of food decisions. And I didn't feel myself. And I didn't know that I could become like somebody who made instinct-based decisions. And when I realized that, um, I, uh, I wanted to get on the other side of that. And... Uh, I wanted to give that map to other people. So that's why I made the film. I wanted it to be an immersive experience. Um, to me, the most important character in the film is the viewer. So I wanted the viewer to be able to go through it and hopefully by the time they're done watching it, um, have a freer life and become their true selves. I mean, even that clip, it feels like you're watching as a, like the viewer. Ab absolutely, and that's what I wanted to ask you because you, know, you became instantly famous with the success of Family Ties. But talk to us about what was the voice that was guiding you back then as opposed to now? Well, you know, we have a lot of kind of thoughts in our heads. And uh, I definitely, like I said, made a lot of fear-based decisions that, you know, took me off track. Um, I would see people who were more confident and were making instinct-based decisions. And I really wanted to be like that. And I didn't know I could transition from being one type to another. And when I realized that I could... I was all in, and um, I'm sure there's lots of ways to get there, but I wanted to share the map that I discovered worked uh, with everyone else. Led you to the right place. Justine, I wanted to get into you directing this film. She's laughing at your character. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I love it. It's great. I've embarrassed myself. <laughs> but when we just played that little clip, no, it, was great. It, it was interesting. You had Justin Thoreau, right, being the voice of inside a woman's head. I found that interesting. Yeah. Why did you choose a man to be inside the woman's head? Something that made the biggest difference for me when I transitioned from making fear-based decisions to instinct-based decisions was as an experiment, thinking about these thoughts as if somebody else was saying them to me. If somebody else was saying them to me, would I s treat them with as much validity? Would I think they were true? Mm. And so that made a massive difference for me. In doing that, I could look at what was being said objectively and see that they were lies, because they're all lies. So I wanted to give that to the viewer. I wanted the voice of her negative thoughts to be so different from oh, wow. Olivia Munn that it would help the audience to think of their own negative thoughts as if someone else is saying them so they could look at them objectively. Wow. Well, let's talk about filters, not only just filtering in your head, but filters on social media, because you had a very strong reaction to someone who oh. filtered your face online. So why are filters so dangerous in your yeah. opinion? Oh, whoa. Yes, look at that. Wow. Um, yeah, I find that very um, uh, dismissive and like an effort to delete who somebody is, delete them, delete them as a species, delete them as a human, delete them, delete everything they've ever done in their life, delete every bit of their personality. Um, yeah, that's a world I don't want to live in. So yeah, I found that to be the most offensive picture of myself I'd ever seen online. Wow. I'm so happy to hear And there's a book yeah. called- Yes, I wanted to talk yeah. about your book because honestly- And there's a book I wrote called Face, yeah, yeah. Uh, face one square foot of skin that uh, is about women's faces getting older and why that makes people angry. Um, oh, there you have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, people might enjoy reading that. And uh, Violet's a good companion to that because though Violet is about um, just the human condition, it's 
it's not specific to male or female. It's applicable to anybody who's going through that or will be going through that or knows someone who's going through, you know, making fear-based decisions. But it's a good companion. Uh, actually, the both the books, Fame, Face, and then uh, the film are a good trio. It's a triptych. Yeah, and I, you know, I have to say, just because I know that a lot, we, we have this conversation a lot on our show, Justine, just like the danger of filters and altering, and I really worry about my young daughter. I don't want her to see this like unrealistic expectation and for her to internalize it, right? So what advice would you give to parents yeah. out there or anybody, any one of us who's struggling, they don't want to grow old now, Naturally, or they just want to change their face with a filter. What advice would you give them? Well, a couple of things. I would I would say, you know, watch Violet. It, it goes a long way to explain why people say nasty things to you. The shorthand is that when someone says something nasty to you or says, oh, you look old or whatever, they're telling you about themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not telling you about you. Mm. Okay, that's the first thing. And the second thing is if somebody says, um, Oh, you look old or you know there's there's some fear i found that it it trips in us like oh i'm afraid if somebody thinks i look old then therefore everyone has a fill in the blank therefore uh, i won't get a job or i won't get a mate or um no one will listen to you whatever it is and what i propose in the book is look at what that fear is because if you can deal with that fear get rid of that fear then you won't carry it around with you anymore and if you want to cut your face up afterwards fine but don't let that be the reason you're cutting up your face because it's not going to fix that particular fear wow thank you so much I love Justine. It. Wow. i know we really wow, appreciate you catch justine's new movie violet out in fears today you can also watch on demand starting november 9th and of course get her book thank you so much justine we appreciate you have a happy halloween thank you justine on the book. happy halloween